Yes, it works. Hi, everybody. We're talking about a company that you might not know about very much. Next Era, usually down in Florida. All those people down in Florida, love you. Get your power. Um, disclaimer this is edutainment, education, entertainment, not financial advice. All right, so we're going to the tip side first. And you go down to your research and not your financial advice. So, take everything with a grain of salt and let's get to this. All right, get ready. Hi, social media world. My name is Alfred Gordon Liu. This is 8 at 8. 8 minutes starts right now. Just like that. All right, we're taking Warren Buffett's advice, investing in the S&P 500. If you're a past investor, not thinking about any. But those of you who want to dive in a little bit deeper and pick some companies, we picked 20 here for you, and we're just tracking them all, all year long, all year, all year long. And this is one company that you might not know of. It's called Next Energy. It's mostly down in Florida. They do wind and solar and renewable energy, and I love it. All right? So this is a company that I would vote with. Uh, you know, some other companies, they might have a lot of controversy like that one, but this is a clean one. So I had to, I had to balance out the force, you know, from Kinder Morgan all the way out to, to Next Energy. But this belongs uh, in S&P 500 under the sector utility. And utility is really a great one because a lot of people consider this to be recession-proof. Uh, also very much a defensive play. And I think without a doubt right now, we are getting into defensive territory. So let's get to this for you positional traders. Those are people who are buying and holding. Let's take a look at the technical charts with uh, Nextera. And ooh, I got some cool stuff that I want to show you now. So we're zooming in here to Nextera. Oh, and if you don't know about Nextera, let's, let's do this right here. I want to show you this is Nextera. This is their website. Again, large producer of wind, solar, energy. Uh, you can go on their website and take a look. There's not a lot of news about them. They're just doing what they do, regulated electric company. So let's go back to the charts here, and let's see how they're doing. And I figured out that we could do this with little ovals. Instead of having those circles, I'm going to show you right here that it's moved past the moving average. So you can see that here, one little uh, arrow. And let's try this. We're having some fun here. Does this work? Clicking. No, no, yeah. Oh, there you go. See, I can zoom in. There you go. <laughs> All right, we're having fun with that. So that's, obviously, it peaked around 92. Whoa, that's the wrong thing. It peaked around 93. And then, obviously, in February 22nd, obviously, it just went down as well. So let me get another calendar out here or get another arrow. And the little one is banging around in there. And I'm going to have to give her her warning. Boom. There you, there you go. So you got the three red arrows, meaning up top moving average. It, the price is below the 20-day 20 20 moving average. There are more sellers than buyers. And obviously, uh, people are being more fearful of this. And this all happened around February. That's right. January 22nd. That's what it says here. When those things triggers but these things don't trigger till the end of the month and obviously solidify so this is your positional trade if you are into next era could it be time to kind of get out put your money into cash that might be a good defensive play even though this is a de defensive company so this is the people that are looking for uh, looking at sector momentum you're hearing a lot about energy you're hearing about a lot about utility uh, in the market obviously with ukraine and russia uh, gas and oil is the biggest thing, but this is a, a different company in renewable energy. So are they more resilient? You would think, but let's take a look at their chart here for all you swing traders. And let's take a look specifically at the Bollinger Bands about volatility. So why has this fallen off a cliff? Let's take a look at this one. Let's activate this. Uh, no, let's delete it. 
because that ain't cool, Robert Frost. You'll see that right here, where's my ovals? We started having a big gap. Oh no, that's not where I want. Do, 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 do. Working it out, working it out. Right here we had a big gap down. Come on, can I get the ovals going? There you go. You'll see a big gap down there. Also a huge gap down here. So what happened around these areas? Why did this happen? And we'll see, there's some other buying opportunities here if you think there is a value here, but definitely not overvalued, undervalued. A lot of times to to short it or to to pick it up at a, a value if you've done your valuations. But what I really wanna draw your eye on is this. This is, most of you guys have watched my show already, you know that this moves the needle right here. These wonderful dividend and earnings calls, right? But if you notice, this one is, oh, I think I, I can do this, watch this. Really small, let's get bigger, come on, let's try this. Come on, work with me. Work with me? No? Oh yeah, work with me. There you go. So as you can see, this one's at 40, uh, 41 cents, uh, the earnings. And if you look at the other ones over here, that was 75. Oh, that's not what I want to do. There you go. So with that said, I'm going to scroll here. You'll see 67. You'll see earnings call 04. And up here, 266. This is all the way back in October of 2020, uh, before they had a stock split. Right? This definitely affects evaluation. I'm going to circle this right here as well. Good to know. I didn't even know they had a, a four to one stock split. So if you ever see this purple, you got to cut all your evaluations by four or by a quarter uh, to make all these adjustments. So to, if you're taking this earnings share, 266. You quarter it, is it about 40 cents? Yeah, it is, right? So that's why you're seeing this. But has the dividends changed as well? That's something that you gotta check as well. You'll notice that the dividends were $1.40 consistently for a long time. You see that, $1.40, $1.40, our wonderful dividends. After the stock split, are they about $1.40? Yeah, you know, even a little bit better, right? Cut, cut that before, that was a 160. You'll see it dropping down as well. So the dividends, once they did the stock split, was a good ratio. So they're still paying out their dividends quite well. So this is considered dividend king. Obviously those people that are investing uh, long term, you still want to hold on to this. So let's zoom out of here. All right. That was cool that I got to, to show you that. I just wanted to show off and show you that I could zoom in here. But again, with these things, when is the next earning call? Let's take a look. Only got one minute left. Woo, it's going fast. So if we take a look at this, we're looking at these wonderful economic calendars. They just had their earnings called January 25th. You can see it there down below. Ooh, zooming in right here again. Oh, yeah. So they had it at 12 a.m. Eastern time. They pretty much hit the mark. The Wall Street was estimating 0.4. They reported 0.41, a little bit better than expected. Today's economic calendar, which we want to get to, there's a lot of events going on, not just the Russia-Ukraine, but what's going to move the needle today as we move into interday. Look at all these things right here. A lot of reports going in, mostly durable goods. I'm really looking at consumption adjusted and then also uh, consumer sentiment uh, as well. That's in here. Uh, I gotta get to the intraday charts because we're getting out of time and I can pause it because it's my show. Man. So if we're talking the intraday and where did this thing come from? This oval. That's crazy. We're gonna delete these things because we're paused. Let's look at intraday. How's it doing? This is the last five days of the chart. We're just gonna take a Fibonacci here and we're gonna go from the lows around 70. We're gonna try to get to the highs up here and let's see where it matches. Doo -doo -doo. Right there, that's a good channel. I'm just gonna drop it like it's hot. So if we zoom into here and we're looking for intraday traders, it is definitely busting through some ceilings. Uh, it's got a lot of upside potential just because it had that crazy, crazy drop. And why did it have that crazy drop? This is the one thing I wanted to tell you. I've been teaching you about earnings calls, I've been teaching you about dividends, 
But this is the, the major thing that also that can move the needle. If they ever make a news, you might read this uh, article. For, oh, Motley Fool, it's zoomed out. Let's see if we can zoom it out here. Boom. Motley Fool is a great uh, resource to, to look at. They usually give contrarian uh, kind of ideas to the, to the market. Uh, but what they've displayed here is the CEO. They had a wonderful CEO change. A longtime CEO, Jim uh, Robo, uh, was, you know, not, I don't think it was a founder, but if I remember, he he was uh, in it for a long time. And now we got a new CEO, John Ketchum. And people, the reason why they like Jim, Jim Robo is because he was really good to investors, right, to the shareholders. Uh, we don't know if John's the same thing. Obviously, there's going to be lots of changes, but. Uh, is this company still a dividend king for all those longtime investors? But with the change uh, in CEO, it can also affect the stock price. So that's what we're seeing here as well. You got to check that news too. And that's why it's good to check out company's investor relations website. Ooh, that's fast. Sorry, I couldn't do a deeper dive. I'm still working out in terms of technicals. I know that was diving a little more into, into research, but I wanted to tell you what else could move on. Good thing we haven't even got fundamentals. Just absolutely nuts. So, with that said, check out Nextera. It's also time with things you know turning in the markets, turning the bear market. You also want to prepare. Do you get defensive or you just sit out in cash, right? Or money market. Something to really kind of think about for all these people out there. You hate to see you lose money, and that's not what we're talking about. So, with that said, check out the companies, see what they're doing, but I'm glad to give you a little perspective and let's take a look at the technical trends. With that said, 